many, many years associating food with just the wrong things. You know, I'd, I'd get a big sale and I'd make a lot of money and I'd immediately just go and buy a burger. And my appalling advice, and it's appalling because it's useless, is I haven't got a clue. I have no idea. I, my experience is if someone doesn't want to be helped and someone isn't already at the door saying, help me, then it's pointless. You know, the, the fight or flight is supposed to be, there's a, there's a you know, fucking saber-toothed tiger about to eat me. I'll deal with it or I'm dead and that's it. You're not supposed to spend three weeks stressing over it. When, you're, when your hormones are out of whack, the impact it has on you is monstrous. I found myself, yeah, basically very, very miserable. And I say miserable, I would be in bed, unable to get out of bed, and would spend the day in bed eating Pringles or something. Never just become dad, husband. You, the only thing you are guaranteed to have forever is you. You're, you're not guaranteed that your wife, your husband, will be with you forever. I mean, crikey, you're not, I say not guaranteed. Statistically, 50% says it won't happen. And I'd drop them at the game, and I'd then go for a run. And I'd come back after the run and pick them up and take them home. And I'd go, why are you watching your kids play basketball? Well, why? Because I've seen them play basketball. It's, it's a 10-year-old bouncing the ball. What, I, I'm not missing much. I'm not, I'm not missing, you know, LeBron's not on the, on the court. There's nothing interesting going on. Welcome back to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Today's guest is above average, a former fat bloke and fitness YouTuber, Mark Lewis. Mark, welcome to the Everyday Perspective podcast. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure, mate. As I, as I, as I said previously, I'm a big fan, mate. Been watching your uh, your content for a very long time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it feels a little bit surreal uh, chatting to you in person or virtually in person. <laughs> No, it's uh, well, we're still getting used to people saying things like that. So it's uh, it's yeah. surreal. It's surreal for me that it's surreal for you. Yeah, brilliant. So obviously, you're a above average middle aged fitness YouTuber. Um, you know, can see from the screen that you're in pretty good nickname. You've got uh, just a few medals to your to your right hand side there. Um, but have you always been in shape? Uh, no. And the medals are actually people ask about the medals a lot, or, or they they kind of highlight the medals as being evidence of something. The only thing the medals are evidence of is my ability to find time on a weekend and a spare twenty quid to enter a local race. That's it. <laughs> um, they are they are no evidence of ability whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I just I just get really bored, so I do lots of races at the weekend. If I've got one tomorrow, perfect example. I'm racing my gravel bike in a duathlon. So that gives you an idea of how well I'll do. Uh, but, I, but I will get a medal. So um, so that, that's, that's where medals come from. I'm not, I'm not sure what either of those things are, actually, mate. A gravel bike. And what was the other word you used? Uh, well, a gravel a gravel bike is a bicycle that goes on gravel. Um, okay, including it's the title. Complicated, complicated as that. It, 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 you don't use it in a duathlon. To, and you don't know what a duathlon is. A duathlon is uh, it's a triathlon without the swimming bit. Oh. So it's basically yeah, it a sensible, like a sensible triathlon because it sounds better is, to me. Sounds better to me, mate. Yeah, triathlon um, swimming is is. Uh, I mean, I hesitate to say for idiots, but I didn't hesitate that long, <laughs> did I? Um, so yeah, it's, it's just the cycling and the running, which is a bit that I enjoy, or the two bits. Um, and did I was I always in shape? No, I not really. I was in shape until I was about nineteen, and then I started working proper and got out of shape so by the time i hit 21 22 i was um loaded and fat is probably uh the best description and stayed stayed that way until i was about 30 35 36 37 um which is a few years ago i, I turned 50 actually i'm 50 next week i'm 50 next what whatever next week is um so 15 years ago maybe for 13 14 years ago i decided to sort of uh not be quite so fat really festively started, plump i call it mate started started jogging that, that was really i kind of forest gumped it really i just kind of went out the door and just ran until i wasn't obese that, that was that was that was all i knew how to do so what was the uh, what was the lifestyle and then the sort of you said you had a, a sort of proper job but i'm assuming that was some sort of desk work or office job was it yeah i was a uh, i worked in financial services so i got incredibly lucky with my financial services career because i joined it at a time so when did i start i started mid 90s and uh back then it was a little bit kind of wolf of wall street really you could just kind of go into it with no background in in anything really i mean i went into the background of being a lifeguard uh and they said yeah you'll do 
And if you could sell financial products to people, then that, that was it. You, they, they wanted you and they kept you on. And if you couldn't, they got, they got rid of you quite quickly. So I went into it. I mean, you, you, could, you simply couldn't do that nowadays. You, you, in fact, I say you couldn't do it nowadays. Within about seven or eight years of me starting, we would got to the point where regulation made it impossible for anyone to do that. You'd have to get properly qualified. And typically, people were coming in with things like economics degrees and stuff. And I'd, I'd left school at 16 with, with nothing. So, yeah, it was a desk job. It was, it was a desk job most of the time. But then I'd be out seeing clients and stuff. And I was, because I did quite well, I was given a, a lot of flexibility to sort of work my own hours and do my own thing, really, which was, I mean, on the one hand, it was great because I was early 20s and making um, quite good money and had a lot of freedom. And, and then they all said, that, that's nice. But the downside of that was I, I just chose to eat a lot, really. That's, that's, that was my, my hobby because I had no time for any proper hobbies. So I just, I just ate and ate and ate. Uh, was it, was so, it nice so at the time? It was, it was a horrible kind of way to live. It was, uh, it was unpleasant. I felt, I felt ill most of the time, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it left me with all manner of kind of conditions as it were uh, yeah, mentally and physically that, 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 that are still with me to this day Me- mentally in particular in terms of in terms of my relationship with food it is horrific and i don't i don't know whether that would have always been the case irrespective of what my um past had been like but um but but it is the case and, and i i i put it down to spending many many years associating food with just the wrong things you know i'd, I'd get a big sale and i'd make a lot of money and I'd immediately just go and buy a burger. And, and so those two things just became, you know, like a Pavlovian response almost. It was like, you know, ka-ching, go and order a Big Mac. Um, and, and even to this day, I find it very hard not to have a success in in my kind of new world, which would typically be a fitness success, and not to have a part of my brain say, right now, go get the burger. Uh, <laughs> that's just what you do. Um, so, yeah, so that, that was that's how I got out of shape, money yes. and the availability of food. I love the uh, I love the, the the big win and the celebratory Big Mac. Yeah, Nothing, I mean, no gourmet uh, burgers, just a Big Mac. The, the, the trouble is, if it was just a Big Mac, it probably would have been all right. But it, it was <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a Big Mac. In fact, interesting. I've got a video coming up in in a couple of weeks' time that is basically kind of join me on a day of binge eating. I had a, a binge episode which occurs to me occasionally. Um, not long ago, and, and while I was in the midst of it, it's quite hard to do because when you're in the middle of something like that, it's, it's quite hard to be rational because you're doing something irrational. But I, I tried to find some moments of, of sanity. And I wrote down what I was doing. I recorded what I was doing. Even I mean, even writing it down made me realize how nuts it was to be eating what I was eating, but I still couldn't stop. And I thought, I'll use this, and I'll, I'll, I'll turn this into a video, and I kind of take people through a day of what a binge eating is like because – Sometimes people say to me, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I struggle with binge eating too. Like sometimes I'll have three digestives when I should have two. And I'm like, oh, okay, you don't get it. You don't, you know, that, <laughs> that's that, not that's, it. I'm not talking about three digestives instead of two. I'm talking about being, you know, so full and so stuffed with food that I feel physically ill, but still having another pack of digestives at 3 a.m. Um, and then going out to buy more. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, the reason I'm doing the video is actually because sometimes people that, genuinely are in that place believe that no one else is quite so nuts as they are so it's nice for them to hear that they're not alone and you can also be in okay shape and still struggle in that way and it's also quite useful because i've done stuff in the past where i get people contact me and say it's really useful because my whatever husband wife boyfriend girlfriend mum, dad whatever has that issue and i always thought they were you know nuts and the only one and it would drive me insane so it's quite useful to see that actually there's others you know, out there and, and maybe they aren't quite so, you know, you know, I mean, they are, they are, what they are doing is nuts, but, but the fact that someone else is doing it as well means that actually maybe it is something more of a condition rather than just kind of isolated lunacy. Um, so it's quite you, useful for people to know that, you know, if, if you've got someone in your whatever family, social circle that's behaving in a way you can't get your head around, it's sometimes useful to see that other people do that too. Uh, it's not just your, your mad friend. Was you always like that, even through childhood? Um, did in your terms parents of food. like? Yeah. So, did your parents used to reward you with like bad food when you were younger for doing something well? 
They did, but, but I, I, the, the problem is, and I was born in 1973, so uh, I, I, to, to parents that, that were just kind of regular working class, kind of, you know, uh, I mean, everyone's parents are normal to them, aren't they? But, but they, you know, they never, had much, never had huge money. We never went kind of abroad for holidays I mean, at, at all. Nothing like that. And so, yes, they did reward me with food, but, but, but only the food they could afford. So, so maybe the reward would be a packet of crisp or something. The, the, the problem was, I mean, I can, I can remember vividly buying my first house, which I bought at about 20, just after I got my, this, this job, uh, which tells you what, what that industry was like back then. It, it, you're 20, you just go and buy a detached house just like that because it, it, it was a good job. And I can remember... Me and my my girlfriend at the time, who, who ended up becoming my wife, um, we were sat on the the floor of the living room at about one o'clock in the morning, just eating pizza, because we could, because we had now our own house to eat pizza in, and it was it was this kind of moment of realization that suddenly I can do anything now, and and yeah, in the in the past it would have been a packet of crisps because my mum said I could have them. Now I could do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I had I had the, the time, the resources, everything, and and it just went rapidly downhill. Had I stuck with you know a packet of crisp because I scored a goal at Saturday football or something, I'd have been all right. But it just yeah. uh, it just it just went off off the deep end, big big time. I think it does with a lot of people though, doesn't it? I remember when I first met Paul, one of the things he said to to me about what he didn't want to get his little boy into was uh, rewarding his his boy for um, with bad food. Can you remember saying that to me? And that's yeah. always stuck with me a little bit because I I then realised that shit, I do that with my son and my mum would do that with me. So those patterns are like ingrained in you, aren't you? And I obviously I, like I'm a personal trainer and with a lot of my clients, I constantly say about the emotional eating side, like really look at yourself when are you falling into these traps of eating shit food gorging and doing all this stuff it's always when something either good happens or something either bad happens yeah and then they they justify it through that don't they yeah yeah i mean exactly that i mean you know a good example of 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 a poor association with food is stuff like when i was a kid for example we always had pudding or dessert Mm -hmm. so you'd have you'd have your meal and then you'd have a, a, a sweet uh, which makes no sense. I mean, if your if your if your meal filled you up, uh, for example, I've just had my I've just had my evening dinner before I, before recording this. So, Jen serves up my evening dinner and I eat it and it's lovely and it's filling. If I then said to her, "Now a piece of cake, please," she'd be like, "What? What, 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 what are you on about? You just had you just had, you just eaten." But but that's as as kids. That's how that's how we grew up. You have dessert. It was just like you know, eat your dinner and you get your dessert. It was just this association that that you got this this sweet treat at, at the end that, that was like, you know, the, the pot at the end of the rainbow. Um, and you're right. It, it is linked with, with emotion. I mean, I, I it's weird actually. I, I, what I tend to find is that I have a very, very good thing occur and it lets me rest on my laurels. And, and I then that's when I'm most vulnerable. Um, I, I mean, interestingly, my latest binge was, was prompted by me doing a video on how well, my fat loss was going so i'm editing a video where i'm i'm you know almost six pack lean and i'm and i'm looking good and i'm sat in front of that screen for you know eight eight nine hours a day for three or four days looking at this image of me being you know what, what i want to be before i know it three or four days later my brain has gone cool we don't need to do anything in terms of uh, weight control now because because look at us and and i'm i'm you know knee deep in in burgers again um, so it's always that resting on a laurel, and, and then what happens? I then get, I then get emotion, then and it flips. I'm now sad because I'm eating rubbish, and so then I carry on eating because I'm sad. But it's always the the, the trigger is always something good. Uh, whenever whenever I peak, I'm left thinking, oh, I've peaked. Yeah, now what? And it's very 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 hard to to overcome. I've got lots of things in my diary that I should be training for. So people say, I'll oh, set a target, have a goal, and it will keep you on track. I've got things in my diary that that would keep any sane person on track i mean i've got i've got uh, high rocks fitness events coming up um that i'm supposed to be that i'm spending thousands of pounds on getting trained for i've got a photo shoot coming uh, in january we're doing a kind of you know what goes on behind the scenes of a kind of professional fitness photo shoot so i'm going to be you know wandering around shirtless for that uh, I'm, I'm in egypt on holiday in a few weeks time 
I have every reason why I might want to be lean exists in my diary. And yet still, because I was kind of thrown into that resting on my laurels phase, I was just adding, you know, handfuls of chocolate chips to my protein shake and telling myself it's okay because it's a protein shake with a kilo of chocolate chips in it, however. <laughs> it, was more chocolate, <laughs> it was more chocolate chips than protein shake, but my brain's going, it'll be okay because it's, mm. yeah, it's protein. Um, yeah, it's a, tough, it's a tough one, mate, isn't it? Because I, going back a few years, I did a lot of OCRs. So I did a little bit of Tough Mudders. Um, I think I've done a, probably not as many as you looking at your medals, but I've done about, about 16, I think. Okay, um, yeah. Did sort of Spartan Trifecta, Rat Race, yeah, and yep, prior to that, those, I used yeah. to prior to that I used to compete in martial arts as well. And I repeat, I, I I kind of did a very similar thing to you by the sound of it. Where I I would always do these events shirtless, like an absolute bell end. Um, but it was just something that me and my two mates did. <laughs> yeah. Even for Tough Mudder, which was a bit of a jolly for most people, we were running around with our you know shirts off and our numbers across our chest. So we'd get super lean for that. And then honestly, the the week following was exactly the same as you just described. I'd go just all in, just double down. But for me, I was a bit of a drinker as well. So I wouldn't just eat bad. I'd also drink a lot of alcohol. And as right. a result of that, sometimes it would spiral and continue longer than it, it should have done. So the two questions on that, I guess, is one, was alcohol ever an issue for you? And two, you know, if you've ever fallen into that spiral sort of longer than a few days, how do you pull yourself back out? No, the, the, the alcohol has never been an issue for me. I was, uh, I was never a big drinker. Um, what, one of the things that I had, I'm, I'm tall, I'm 6'6", 220, so I'm quite, I'm quite big. Uh, and one of the things I noticed quite early on when I was young, sort of 16, 17, if I went into town with my friends, um, of all the people in our, in our group, if someone was going to get somebody be kind of leery and annoying towards them, it was me because I was, I was big. Um, and and also terrified of, of, of people like that. So it wasn't I wasn't kind of bringing it on myself. I was just I was just a kind of obvious target. So it, it just occurred to me very early on that that, uh, that that my small friends, sober or not, were no use to me in a confrontation. So basically, I had to stay sober. So I, I spent my teens remaining sober so I could defend myself because my friends were too useless to defend defend me on on, on my behalf. And, and so I never really kind of got into drinking. I just never got into it. And then, um, uh, I've, I've, I, I have to be I'm slightly careful how I, how I describe this because the people in question are still alive. Um, I, I had experience of people close to me um, going down a very very bad path with with alcohol, and I, as anybody that is close to somebody um, who is going down that path, it just becomes inevitable that you end up kind of getting sucked down with them to some extent until until you're free to, to break away from them or, or you don't break away from them and you go down with them. So that, that not that I was a drinker anyway, but that experience just made me think, wow, like I, I never was and now I never will be. So I, I probably drink, uh, but I'd equally I don't, I don't, um, I don't not drink. I've, I've got four kids. One of the things that I didn't, they're all grown up now. I didn't want any of my kids to, to see drinking as a bad thing. Um, I just wanted them to see it as something that you can do properly. So I would, I would, I didn't not drink because I didn't want them to think um, that that was the solution. Because with kids, if you, you know, we say don't do something, it's that, that just doesn't work. So, so consequently, I, I mean, I, I try to think last time I had a drink. I probably had a, a Jack Daniels about three weeks ago when we went out for the night, and I might have one. I don't know on my birthday next week. I mean, I, if I have, if I have on average a Jack Daniels a month, that's that's probably about it. Um, and I could, I could go six months and, and wouldn't miss it. Uh, I have a Diet Coke addiction. Um, yeah, but, same as um, me, mate. <laughs> but yeah, but, but alcohol, I mean, even if I go out in the evening, I don't, you know, I'm driving normally because I want to, I've always, I've always been, uh, again, I think it comes back to the size thing. I've always just been very acutely aware that I'm normally the biggest person anywhere. And it just, it just always struck me as being useful to remain sober. Um, it sounds ridiculous. For example, here, here's how here's how nuts that that philosophy runs in me. When I go on flights, if I'm flying anywhere, uh, I don't eat the day of the, the the day of the flight. I always fly fasted, and I never drink because if something kicks off on that airplane, I, I, I need to I need to be like you know Wesley Snipes, passenger fifty seven. I need to be on it. <laughs> so I, I I know I know where that's come from. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than on my very very first ever flight ever, I, I took myself to New York when I was twenty one, I think, 
And and there was a fight broke out between a couple in the seats in front of us. I mean, this is obviously way before kind of you know nine eleven stuff, and, and you know it was it was a different time. But I sort of remember thinking, oh, this is this is problematic. Um, but but I'm okay. I can I can if I need to assist, I can. So I've always just kind of yeah, I've always just confirmed kind of myself. I'm going out for the evening. If I go on a flight, any anywhere where I I just think it would be handy to remain sober here. Uh, and that's normally compounded by the more people around me that are being drunk, the more I feel someone needs to be sober here. So when, I, when I'm at Heathrow getting a flight and I look at people at 7 o'clock in the morning all having their fried breakfast and pints of beer before they get on their plane, I think, okay, some, someone needs to be on it. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to know you're on hand, mate. Next time I'm drinking yeah, indeed, now. well, indeed, yeah. I, I'm the, the hero you never knew you needed, yeah. It's me. So, sober Mark. <laughs> Perfect. And then the second part of the question there that I asked, and it, it may not apply to be fair if, if you if you you know haven't slipped into that kind of drinking spiral with food, but on the occasions thinking back where you have, you know, sort of achieved a goal and you then start turning to the burgers again and mm. you know the sort of chocolate sprinkles and whatever whatever else it is you have. And that continues for sort of a longer period and, and maybe you start noticeably putting on weight and you sort of mention then you get a bit down in the dumps, a bit sad yeah. about that. Yeah. What, what have you got in place to kind of pull yourself back out of that? Is, is it the goals in the diary or is it, are there other mechanisms you've got? As well? No, the goals in the diary never work. The, 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 the thing, and this, this is a fairly recent one because that, that, those spirals used to last a long time. Um, and the thing that's, that I've, I've tried to, and, and does work, I mean, to, be, to be fair, the thing I've, I've done the last couple of years is I've become acutely aware that what's gone is gone. So I don't wake up on, on, on in the morning and think oh my goodness yesterday was terrible so I'll, I'll well I, so I might as well sleep badly because it's you know, it's all going down here like you say you look in the mirror and it's all just it's all just grim I, I'm so I, I try to focus very heavily on forget everything that has been where am I at right this second and it allows me to um it, it doesn't always work first time but if I do that as much as I can at some point during that spiral I, I'll snap out of it. So I never do ever. I never do this kind of. I'll start my diet on a Monday, or I'll or I'll start it on January the first, or I'll, I, I never m- makes no sense to me. I, I look at this. I, I use. I talk about this sometimes my, my, on my videos. I, I look at my dogs. So my my dogs, all they care about is are they happy right now? That's it. They don't care what happened to them yesterday. They got no expectations for tomorrow. They just want to know if they're happy today. And if they're not happy, they'll, they'll get up and they'll go and do something that makes them happy. Whatever, chew about whatever. So I, I, I looked at it incredibly simply like that. If I'm doing something stupid, if I've eaten badly that day, and it's now five o'clock, I don't think, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. I just think, no, stop. Am I happy right this second? No, I'm not. Why not? Because I'm eating badly. Then stop eating badly. And 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 whatever will be, will, will then be. So I do that, um, and, and that has touch wood for the last couple of years worked and it's basically turned what could have been six seven eight day binges into mm. two day binges yeah the older i get as well the more aware i am that i don't have time to kind of dwell on the past and have it screw up my limited future you know i'm 50 that there's only so many years left and i can't be wasting them being miserable about what i did yesterday I just don't have so I think the older I get the more uh, the more brutal I've become with myself in, in terms of sort of you know slap slap you don't have time for, for this nonsense and and that allows me to yeah pull myself together as it were no I love that mate that's um, yeah such a good point because I think sadly so many blokes and girls I guess but you know this is typically a, a sort of mini blokes podcast but go the other way don't they um, and they do sort of go into that all or nothing sort of mindset and yeah, and can't slap themselves out of it. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, and and and, and nowadays with social media um, telling them that everything is all or nothing, um, mm. and and everything needs to be grim, and you know, yeah, the, the sort of the, the 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 nonsense that I get presented on Instagram reels and stuff that that's kind of, that's supposed to be motivational and, and stuff, but isn't. It's just it's just telling men that if you're not crushing it and you know waking up at four a.m. and you know if you're not in your cold plunge by four thirty and then eating your elk steak by five a.m. you're a failure and uh, yeah, no wonder men are walking around feeling useless. Um, yeah, and 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 so again, the older I've got, the more I've been able to just say no nonsense. If I see 
I don't know, Goggins. I'm working on a project at the moment, actually, where I've got a clip of David Goggins swimming with his arms tied behind his back and his legs tied together. And he's demonstrating how he overcomes, I don't know, being tied up and thrown in a river, I guess. <laughs> overcomes drowning. Basically. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> drowning. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, uh, and it's brilliant for Goggins because Goggins has made a career off of it. So Goggins should be throwing himself in rivers tied up because it works for him. So amazing. It's also great because I, for someone like me, because I can look at Goggins doing something nuts and think, okay, that's nuts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to go for a jog in the rain. So I'm going to take his insanity and I'm going to use it to motivate me to do something a bit more sensible. The, the problem is the people that look at it and think, oh, I haven't thrown myself in a river tied up. Therefore, I'm a failure. And, and, and th- th- we've, we've kind of, we found ourselves in a world where if you aren't emulating the people that you see, you, you're, you're, you're missing the point. And that never used to be the case. It used to be about motivation, not emulation. So I would see when I was 10 years old, Daily Thompson on Superstars, and I wouldn't want to be a decathlete or, or, do, or even do, you know, um, dips or something. <laughs> I just want to go, I just want to be motivated to go and do my thing having seen him. But now men and women look at social media and they don't want to be motivated to do their thing they literally want to emulate what they're seeing and if they're seeing someone throw themselves in a river tied up and they aren't doing that because they wouldn't because it's nuts to do that then they think oh failed so i might as well have a burger i mean it's just it's just bonkers i'm forever telling people to watch my stuff never copy me i mean I, i yeah I say never if you really want to then then do so but that's not what don't watch me for for kind of tips on what to do watch me have a laugh and think do you know what i fancy going for a jog now or a bike ride or to play badminton or whatever whatever turns you on you don't need to be doing what i'm doing and that that as a as a fitness influencer that's that's unusual because most fitness influencers are saying no do exactly what i'm doing exactly the way i do it otherwise you, you, what you're doing is pointless Mm. Which, which is kind of to use modern language toxic nonsense no it's, it's good mate it's entirely true I, I see that a lot you're absolutely right um i guess thinking about your own experience and that kind of trigger point for when you decided to, to make a change and then not just make a change but a sustained change as well um and then <clears throat> i guess thinking about you know sort of a lot of middle-aged guys now that have, have probably have had a lifetime of being out of shape they never maybe never had that that trigger moment in their 20s when they had a you know a slightly higher metabolism and a bit more energy about them, I mean, what's the advice to, to guys at forty now? And I know you, it's not going to be do what I do because you've just cleared that up. But what is the advice to guys that are middle aged and maybe want to be above average? Uh, it's a, it's a really tricky one because my appalling advice, which is of no use, and I, I get I only get asked this question on podcasts. It's never one I ask of myself. But when, every time I do a podcast, someone says to me, especially if I'm talking to people that are personal trainers. They say, how do, we, how do we either fix, sometimes it's as broad as society, and sometimes it's as narrow as how do we fix you know, an individual 40-year-old that might be asking me a question. And my appalling advice, and it's appalling because it's useless, is I haven't got a clue. I have no idea. I, my experience is if someone doesn't want to be helped and someone isn't already at the door saying, help me, then it's pointless. So I had, I had a person ask me just the other day, actually, uh, one, of, one, of, one of my patrons said, my, my brother is just not looking after himself at all eats terribly drinks you know what what can i do and my advice to him was you know, ignore your brother you know step away you know you, you kind of they, they say in terms of alcoholism you know, detach with love you say look i, I love you I'm, I'm i'm you need me i'm here for you but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna drown with you um and, and that's that's hard to do but but almost essential um no one's ever been helped that didn't want to be helped so that to one side, and, and kind of being a bit more positive about it, the thing that I see with a lot of 40-somethings, and I see it with my friends, they, and I, and I, the, the trouble with describing this is I don't know what the solution to it is, but what they do is they effectively, especially if they have children, they kind of hand in their I'm an individual status, and they get given dad status. And that becomes the only, the only thing that identifies them. They're, they're just... They're just identified by, by, by their, their family and what their children are doing. And, and, and that's, that's great. I mean, I, my, my kids did cool things that I would go and watch and be part of, and I, and I loved all that. But I never stopped being me with my own, <clears throat> my, my own goals, my own aspirations. And, 
and and behaved in a way that many people would call selfish. Yeah, you know, they'd say, "Well, why aren't you watching your kid play? My kid play. My kids play played basketball." So I'd take him to a game, and I'd drop him at the game, and I'd then go for a run. And I'd come back after the run and pick him up and take him home. And I'd go, why aren't you watching your kids play basketball? Well, why? Because I've seen them play basketball. It's it's a ten year old bouncing the ball. What I, I'm not missing much. I'm not I'm not missing. You know, LeBron's not on the on the court. There's nothing interesting going on. And occasionally I'll watch, and if it's, a, if it's an interesting game, I, you know, I'm, I'm not not ever watching them. But equally, I'm not doing what many dads do, which is watch every single second of a kid do a sport that they are going to drop when they discover girls at 15 and have no recollection that you ever saw them anyway by the time they're 20. I mean, once one of the benefits of having kids that are now in their 20s, I look back and my kids can't remember 90% of the things that, 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 that I did with them. Yeah, they can't remember whether I watched them at basketball or not. They can't remember if I took them on holiday or not because they're just dumb little kids at that age. They got no idea. They got no, it just means it's meaningless to them. So what I did was I, I was very acutely aware once I got into training that I wanted to be selfish. And I told myself, and I was right, that that would be in their benefit too because what they'd end up with is exactly what they've got today where the 23-year-old, my oldest son, just started working out so we go to the gym together and we work out together because i'm someone that can work out if i'd not got in shape 13 14 15 years ago i might be dead by now i certainly wouldn't be in shape enough to go work out yeah. with him you'd just so be a mess when you're at this point <laughs> yeah did, did you know if i said to him today would you rather i watched you know an extra you know game of you falling on your backside playing basketball that you couldn't remember today or would you rather i dropped you off went for a run and became the dad I am today that can now go to the gym with you today, and hopefully can go to the gym with you in 20 years' time still, I, I'd like to think he'd say, no, I'd rather you just went, you, know, you got yourself in shape, and, and you, you were you rather than you were just dad. So, so, yeah, my advice is, and it is to my friends, mm-hmm. I hesitate only because they, they, don't, they don't listen, so why would anybody else? But the advice is be selfish. Um, and and uh, by being a better you, you cannot help but become better to those around you. Um, you know, what use is a out of shape, overweight dad when the kids, because you know, your kids will be one day, 18, 19, and they will be on going on holiday on their own and they'll be living their own lives and, and you'll be having this sort of realization moment that you don't need to be dad forever, but you spent so long being dad you now can't do anything else. And you're now 52, 53, 54, and you'll be telling yourself, oh, I've left it too late, I'm done. And before you know it, you're 65, you never got in shape, you're a big fat lump, and then you have a heart attack. That's, and, and that sounds like, oh, dramatic and skip. That, that's normal. That's just normal life in this country. People just get fat and sick and die. That's, you know, I mean, that's just maths. Look at the numbers on that. that that's what's happening. It's not something kind of hyperbolic that's just literally what's going on you go to any saturday morning kids soccer game and look at the the parents standing around the side you, you won't see prime examples of, of perfect health i mean occasionally you will of course you will but but you'll see plenty of people where you're thinking do you know what actually if you put down that sandwich you made for yourself to come and eat while you watch your kid and you leave your kid your kid's fine. Go go do something else. I and mean, bizarrely, near me, there's a gym that has a sports field by, by it. So I, I don't go to that gym anymore, but I used to go to the gym. So I'd be working out in the gym. And at the gym window, I can see parents sat watching for hours their kids play soccer. And I think, why don't you just let them play? Come in here and walk on the treadmill or something or just or do anything. Or even husband and wife go for a walk just go for a walk together and be husband and wife again as opposed to mum and dad and it just yeah so so my 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 big thing is 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 if you've got kids um don't forget or, or indeed if you don't have kids but you have a wife you, you, you never just become dad husband you the only thing you are guaranteed to have forever is you you're, you're not guaranteed that your wife, your husband, will be with you forever. I mean, crikey, you're not, I think not guaranteed. Statistically, 50% says it won't happen. You're not guaranteed for your kids to be uh, kind of into you and wanting you forever. This is not, it's just not guaranteed. But you are guaranteed that on your deathbed, you will still be you. So given you're the only thing that's guaranteed to be around, the idea that people don't look after it is just 
insane. I say it them, them, themselves. Um, you know, you are the foundation of of you, and if you let that go and and think no, it's okay because my kids, my wife, my job, my boss. Well, hang on a minute, all of those things are built on you. If, if you aren't where you need to be, then you you can't be a good husband, a good employee, a good parent. You, you say, well, you certainly can't be as good as you could be. So um, so yeah, the, they in a nutshell. Be a selfish ass. <laughs> yeah, I love that, mate. It's um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's it's so true. I think a lot of people, especially as parents, think about being present and not being an example. Um, and yeah, I think you describe there is 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 being a good role model and a good example, um, even if it means not always being present. Yeah, um, and we we actually had a, a another guest on recently, um, and in a roundabout way, was he saying the exact same stuff, wasn't he? Yeah, thinking about the yeah, he really was. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so important. I think with that, though, being selfish, I think if you are a parent, you still should take them to the th- the football, you know, but what you were saying is the right thing. The, the amount of um, parents at my uh, at my uh, lad's football team that just, you know, you can just tell they just they just go there, they watch it. They Like their activity seems to be to go and watch their children play football, which is great. You know, it's good supportive, you know, a good network for the children. But I think the bigger issue is that that you know they do, they stop looking after themselves you know what i mean and then when their wife or husband or whatever becomes fed up with them leaves them especially blokes i always find that you you know when you're 45 50 overweight your wife's left you your kids have grown up a bit they look and they go fuck what have i got left at this point you know you see it all the time with li- li- yeah exactly well, when i was so when i was 39 so i'm i'm now 49 i'm a week away from 50 when i was 39 and a week away from 40 um, my marriage was my first marriage was was literally on the verge of ending. It, it kind of ended in the December of that year, so it was a month away from ending. But but um, it wasn't it wasn't a surprise. We could see that happening. Um, my kids were all ten years younger than they are now, so they were all sort of early teens. I was out of shape, and I can remember thinking, "Oh my goodness, I'm about to be forty, and that's it, because nothing is ever going to get better from forty onwards." I mean, how can it? And uh, yeah, with hindsight, obviously that was that was bonkers. I mean, I I can't wait to progress between fifty and sixty. So so forty to fifty to I think that was kind of game over was so so naive. But I can remember being there and thinking, if if I don't have my wife and my kids and my job was falling apart, if I don't have those things, it's all over. And actually, do you know what, what I think today? People say to me today sometimes they say, oh, you know, YouTube is a bit risky. What if it all ends? Well, whatever. What if it all ends? Then I live under a bridge whatever I, <laughs> it, it, it re, i'll figure something out but i will be me i'll be me content um physically in shape and if i need to live under a bridge for a bit then i'll live under a bridge and i'll and yeah, if my wife leaves me i'll, I'll meet someone new and yeah it, life but that's everyone on. isn't it you know what i mean like that's everyone with uh when, when people say to you, well, what happens if YouTube ends? You know, well, what happens if you lose your job? You know, yeah. redundancies, you, you know, all those types on. of things. But because you do something slightly, you know, different and out, out of the box, people always think you're a bit mad for doing it. But really, you're not. You're just doing exactly the same as everyone else. But you're willing to put in the time and effort and and really just just gamble and, and go and for also, it. And also, if you look at the statistics for, for, for things that actually go wrong, what actually goes wrong for most people, statistically, certainly once you're over 40, is, is things like you know, cancer and heart attack and stroke or, 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 or car accident or whatever it might be. I mean, those are things that, that actually uh, wipe you out. You know, losing your job as a social media moron isn't, isn't you know, that, that's not <laughs> wiping me out. So if, ad, if, if people were genuinely worried about, you know, kind of encountering a disaster well they they wouldn't be out of shape and they wouldn't be uh exposing themselves to the risk of the actual problems that come along in their thousands i mean you know when you look at the numbers of people that have a heart attack every day i mean if, if you had that many people every day i don't know <laughs> jumping off of buildings they'd, they'd investigate as to why but because they're just kind of collapsing you know, in their bathroom and having a heart attack, no one seems to care that there's whatever 500 people every day you know, dead from it. So the, the real problems in life, no one, no one actually bothers dealing with. And instead, they kind of just make up problems like, like, what if you lose your job? And whatever your job is, you get another job. I mean, I'm not saying that losing your job is not an issue. But um, in terms of what we worry and stress about, that there are real things out there to worry and stress about. 
ironically, stress is one of them. <laughs> um, you know, getting hung up on the wrong things. I mean, one of the things I learned, and I learned this soon after I turned 40, uh, in fact, it was one of the things that really kind of pivoted me into a better place mentally, was I went and did some, some holiday trips to, 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 to some quite sketchy places, or at least I did them in sketchy ways. I kind of motorcycled around <laughs> Namibia on my own and stuff, which, which was a bit kind of high risk. And, and it made me realize that there are real dangers in the world. Uh, you know, driving over the edge of a cliff on your motorbike in, in the middle of the desert is a real danger. Uh, and actually, whether I pay my mortgage on time isn't a real danger. I mean, it's an issue and it needs to be dealt with, but I don't need to lose sleep over it. And so I came back from that trip thinking, okay, there are, there are real problems in, in, in anyone's life, but it's not the things we think they are. Um, and actually, what you know, one of the things I, I learned doing those trips, and, and still do, whenever I try and do holidays now, I always try and occasionally at least go and do one that, that's a little bit um, a bit wacky. I like the sensation of, of fight or flight and thinking, oh, I've got to overcome a problem here. And it could be some simple problem. Where am I going to pitch my tent tonight? You know, it doesn't have to be a big problem. But I like the idea of a problem that occurs and I solve it. I use the fight or flight response, the adrenaline response to solve the problem. That's what, that's what we have a fight or flight response for so that we can either fight or flight. So I fix the problem and I sleep like a baby. When I come home, what I don't want to do is read my kind of appalling bank statement or something and have a fight or flight response to that, that negative situation that I can't then fight or flight. You can't run away or beat up your bank statement if it says you're in debt. <laughs> so, so instead, tried, you to, tried. Yeah, yeah. You, you, instead you just go to bed. You go to bed still fight or flight you go to bed still stressed you wake up the next day you're still stressed you know the, the fight or flight is supposed to be there's a there's a you know fucking saber-toothed tiger about to eat me i'll deal with it or i'm dead and that's it you're not supposed to spend three weeks stressing over it that's why people get ill and, and unwell from stress i mean stress is supposed to be a brilliant thing that's like it's like stress is supposed to be it's like turbo boost for your problem <laughs> It's like you, you, got, you do martial arts. You know, you, you want to go into a fight. I don't do martial arts, so I have no idea. I'm guessing slightly, but you want to go into a fight. If you went into a fight unstressed, that doesn't sound like a good way to approach it. You want your body to be kind of firing on all cylinders, which is stress. And then you want to have the fight, and you then want to kind of calm down. What you don't want to do is, is yeah, get, get upset about something that isn't uh, requiring that stress, but then not better get rid of the stress. So that, that's so that's the, that's the other thing I learned in terms of you know what, what can people over forty do? Mm. It's, it's be really serious with yourself about what are real problems in in your world. And 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 yeah, people just seem to have their eyes closed to. And you need to have your eyes closed nowadays because you only have to turn on the news to see people with real problems. Mm. I don't know how you can watch what's going on in various parts of the world and think. Yeah, my, you know, whatever, how well my ISA did last year is a real problem. I mean, it's not, you know, did, no, no one blew up your house. So in the scheme of things, you know, chill out. And, and so, yeah, so, yeah, so there you go. Be, be selfish be, and be realistic with what your problems actually are. And before you know, yeah. you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, be happy and content. Be, uh, or be your house will get repossessed. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. no. <laughs> it wasn't important. Because you listened to Mark's advice, you <laughs> fucked off your bills, and that's just what you left he with. Said, he said it. He said it was shit advice. To yeah. be fair. He did say. Yeah. It. I've been riding around the desert instead, and uh, yeah, no one said they'd. Read I think this podcast should gone. be called Mark Shit Advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mark Shit Advice. There's a thumbnail. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, mate. It's really insightful, and it's. Um, I think it's a good way to live, isn't it? Yeah. Like to be like that. Like um, Chris Thrall, we had him on, and he was saying, you know, you can't. You can't touch the past, so it doesn't really exist. And people worry too much about the future. Yeah. And it's exactly that. I said it to my wife recently. She was, you know, stressing out about a few bits and pieces. And I said, why are you worried about it? You're worried about stuff that's not even happened yet. And you're worried about stuff that has happened. Like, what, how do you feel right this second? She's like, I'm fine. I'm like, fucking hell, you've got to be fine tomorrow. Like, they're not going to come to our house and take everything. Mm, you know, it's all yes. the stupid shit. You know, just chill. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. And I think in regard to the actual physical activity, so the exercise component, um, I think obviously goal setting and, and events, although they don't seem to work in your diary, I think for some people that they, they are quite, quite effective. And I'm just curious because you've got so many medals there, mate, what is the biggest, like, sort of achievement or accolade that you've got physically that you're most proudest of? Well, well f funnily enough, it's none of those. The, 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 the thing I'm most proud of 
are I don't know, proud. I'm not sure if proud is the right word, but yeah, I mean, it's good enough. It's good enough word. It is. Um, I, I ran. I, I started off doing park run. So park run was one of the. If, if anyone doesn't know, because not everyone knows what park run is, Saturday mornings parks around the world now. I mean, millions of people gather at nine o'clock to a five k run. I've, I'm lucky. I've got four uh, organised around around near me. So I started off doing park run, five k, and I started off doing them in about forty two, forty three minutes, which is which is not quick by by any stretch. Um, and I was so embarrassed at how slow I was, I wouldn't even go across the finish line. I would get within sight of the finish line and sort of skunk off to the to the car and and, and cry, uh, which is stupid <laughs> because there are people now do they even have park walk now for people that want to walk it. So I was wrong. If you're doing a 42 minute park run, hats off to you. Better than being sat on your butt at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning, getting out of bed and go do something. Anyway, I eventually got down to running a sub 20 minute 5k at where I was 47 and and you know still 220 100 kilos uh and that was probably and uh, I say yeah, yeah th- th- these medals will cost me money to, to go and do this park run turn up and run yeah you don't pay a penny and that was the thing that made me realize oh okay I'm now uh, I've got to a place where I'm safe in a way my, my fitness is now so good that I can afford to go backwards. I can afford to have binge days, and and, and I'm not going. You know, it's not going to be a disaster. I don't. I don't want to go backwards, but I'm, I'm, I'm far enough away from where I used to be that I'm never going to be back there. And and that moment of getting sub twenty, it just it just clicked in my head. Okay, you. you and for everybody, it'll be different. You know, somebody else might. <clears throat> excuse me. It might be sub thirty. It, it doesn't matter what what the time is, or indeed what the sport is. But it, it just it was the moment that told me. Okay, you you've come. A long way from where you are, and I, since then I've done I've done more impressive things since then, in terms of you know f- physically better things. I now run almost sub nineteen, but that it's almost pointless. In fact, that's a good example. I'm about to run sub nineteen. Uh, I'm, I'm currently on the verge of doing it, but when I do, so what? I was running sub twenty already. Now I'm sub nineteen. Like, I'm still fucking fast on me. Well, <laughs> I was just thinking, like, fucking hell, that's fast. But, <laughs> but, but, but there's no there's no value to it. There's no, I mean, there is a value to have me me having got sub-20, because as I just described the value. The value to me is me acknowledging that I've kind of almost completed that journey. Now I've gone even faster still. It's kind of like giving, I don't know, Elon Musk another million pounds. I mean, it's yes, he's not going to say no, but kind of, you know, I, I just don't need any more. And one of the things I struggle with actually is 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 pushing myself further than the above average level I'm at because I do question to what end. Um, so I, yeah, that I, I kind of gave up on being proud of, of of my achievements after that. Everything I've done since then has just been things that I'm I'm lucky and able to do. You know, if I go and compete and do something and do well at it, I'm you know I'm, I'm acutely aware how lucky I am in every sense to to be able to do that so i don't i don't feel kind of um pride in it actually one of the things i do feel and this this jumps back a little bit to what we talk about the kids and the parents watching kids play play sports one of the things i found myself doing when i was out of shape watching my kids play sports is screaming and yelling and and and, and being incredibly emotive at, at, at what they were doing and more so than they were you know if one of my kids hit a you know, three pointer or something. Yeah, you know, they're just kind of like a little fist bump, and I'm I'm kind of you know throwing my hands in and, and hollering and shouting. And I know you see it a lot, and it's 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 the, it's the parent living through the through the kid. One of the things that I when I go and get or when I do go and get these medals, even if I come towards the back, and I do on some of them on ultra marathons and things, I'm just not very good at. I, I'm not doing very well at them at all. But I sprint across that finish line, and I have that just yes, I have that um, yeah, that that feeling of. Of, of kind of personal success uh, or achievement or whatever, however you want to describe it. And it's mine. It's not my kids. You know, my, my, my kids should be having their own little moments of yes for, for whatever they're doing. I don't care if it's on the PlayStation or doing a sport, whatever. They can have their, I did well. Um, I need mine. I need, you know, that, that's the other thing as well. If, if you're, a, you know, you're a grown up, you're 40 or 50, you know, when was the last time you, you, you felt Yes, I did that. I mean, most people are going to answer just just flat out never, or, or certainly not as an adult. You know, they, they, they just aren't. And I I get every weekend. You know, tomorrow I'm going to do this to Athlon. I don't know where I'm going to come, but when I cross the finish line, I'll be sprinting for my life to go as fast as I can 
And I'll be thinking, yes, nailed it. And it's nice to be 50 nearly and, and have those moments of yes. So that's a value to me. That's, I don't, pride's the wrong word, but I, but I do value knowing that I'm not too bad at stuff like that. I like, mm. I like turning up tomorrow and thinking, I'm going to do okay. Yeah, I think, do you know, when, when you just said that about how many adults have that sort of elation for achievement, um, you know, I've had a few examples for sure, but I think actually when I think about, you know, the people around me, it's such a good point because I, I think you're spot on. I don't think many, many guys especially do have that. No, I think we're quite lucky with martial arts jujitsu yeah. that you, as I felt a bit lost when I give up football and then I was going to the gym and I had, I didn't have that satisfaction from anything. And then going into jujitsu where you, 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 you fight and you constantly have those, those wins, those, that, that satisfaction, that, that that adrenaline it's all it's all good you know and, and i find that probably i mean most blokes don't have that most blokes must they become dad like you said earlier and they just give up on everything and they wrap themselves up in their kids lives and then they end up with they went up with fuck all really when they get the, the, the jiu-jitsu is interesting I, again i don't do my i did i did judo when i was 11 so so that, that's the limit of my experience but but jiu-jitsu is a great example because because yeah you are getting to every time you're going and rolling around you're, you're getting that stress response so your, your body is getting the opportunity to be stressed as it's supposed to be, but but literally as it's supposed to be. And it doesn't get any more fight or flight than having a fight. A fight, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you get stressed, and then you you either you either win or lose. So the stress goes because you don't need to be stressed anymore. And if you win, you get that that uh, that excitement of of you know. I mean, it's all kind of primal stuff, isn't it? I mean, if you didn't have these. Uh, these instinctive kind of stress responses and and uh, and and reactions of, of positivity to doing well. If you didn't have those responses ten thousand years ago, when the tribe next door came to your town, they'd kill you. And and so you yeah, we need to be as humans able to think. Okay, here's a problem: stress, deal with it, fight, flight, whatever. I won. Yes, those are all things that ten thousand years ago there was a real place for. The trouble nowadays is there isn't really a place for that. I mean, where where, where does a where does a grown you know forty five year old man get to think? Yes, nailed it. You know, actually, for most people, if you just work in an office, you never get that until you go and you watch your your useless kid you know kicking a football around on a Saturday. And, 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 and you're like, yeah, oh yeah, wow, he didn't didn't fall over. I mean that that is a that's a poor substitute for for what you should be able to achieve for yourself. Um, it doesn't do your kid any favors either. You know, it, it just doesn't help anybody. So um so yeah, those that that having a win, um, and unfortunately, where it comes across now in social media is it, it, it's it's transferred into kind of making money or getting a sale or or, or and it all just becomes very kind of. Um, it becomes a zero sum game where for, for you to have a win, someone's got to lose, whether they've given you their money or their business or, or whatever. Whereas the nice thing about my events is it doesn't matter where I came, I've, I've had the win. Even if I come last, I've had the win by completing it. So no one has to be disadvantaged by my need to, to, to feel like I'm a bit, a bit of a beast. Whereas social media would tell you that literally somebody needs to be disadvantaged you know so i was watching some lunatic the other day saying that how he he divides his day up into into two so basically day one is sort of you know 3 a.m until midday and he gets everything done and then he starts day two at you know 2 a 2 p.m so he then gets a second day in and by doing this anyone that's in competition with him is you know three weeks behind after after seven days I think, what, what are you? What, what are you? Complete lunatic! Well, who's who's who are you in competition with? And again, it comes back to my animals. My, my dog's not in competition with anybody. He doesn't care what next door's dog doing. He's just living his own. Yeah, you know, people often say, don't they? I'll be be the alpha and you know be be the alpha wolf and all this sort of nonsense. Yeah, you should. Basically, animals don't give a shit about any other animal unless it's trying to bite them. They just they couldn't care less. Again, it comes back to: Am I happy? with me, with the people that are around me that are important to me right now? If not, how do I fix it? This obsession with kind of crushing others and, you know, taking down the competition and stuff, when actually all you really need to do is go out and do a park run or go to jiu-jitsu or whatever, or play badminton, whatever it is, <clears throat> and think, yeah, nailed it. Yeah. That strikes me as a far healthier way to get that kind of primal 
desire to to win out of your system rather than yeah being a being a moron <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree, mate. And I think there's definitely a lot to be said, I think, for, for sort of achievement, development, sort of a healthy lifestyle. Um, some episodes back now, we did have a doctor on who was talking about um, sort of male hormones and, and testosterone deficiency, especially in men as they get a bit older. And now that can have an impact on, you know, things like mood, but certainly sort of energy levels. Now, I know you've been relatively open about being on TRT, so testosterone replacement therapy. So can we discuss that a little bit, mate? Because I'm quite interested to hear, I guess, firstly, what triggered the investigation? Like, what were you feeling to, to, to look into that? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting one to talk about. I don't talk about it much on YouTube. I, I discussed it on YouTube originally when I had about 4,000 subscribers because I never wanted to get to the, I never wanted to be the person where someone's saying, you know, natty or not. And I didn't, I didn't want that. Um, so, <laughs> and also- What dates are going to come for you after this, mate? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, I, I kind of thought, I'm never going to have more than 5,000 subscribers. So what does it even matter? I'll just do it on, I'll just, I'll just mention it. And also genuinely, I thought if this is useful to someone, and I've had hundreds of people email me from those videos over the, over the last couple of years. So it has helped people. I don't discuss it. Um, I discuss it on podcasts, uh, but I don't discuss it on my channel much now because it, it just comes with so much negative um, negativity uh, th that it's just not worth the hassle for me. Uh, so that's why I don't discuss it much. So anybody that kind of hears this and thinks, hang on, I never saw those videos, so I didn't know why, you know, people do say to me, you should be more open, you should, and people almost want me to sort of wear a t-shirt that says in every video, you know, on gear but that, that, uh, that there's lack of education isn't it on people's part because they don't realize all you're doing is either replacing what you've what you've lost or elevating it slightly to be optimal and and yeah. that's what people they think everyone's a fucking juice said if they're on TRT. i I, I feel for the i mean it, it's the the trouble is i mean you can tell you can tell the whole the whole conversation is problematic because as an example if i was a 50 something female you know, mother of mother of four that had had had, had you know, um, so sort of, yeah, postnatal depression four times after each kid, and had gone through hell and back, and uh, maybe had a hysterectomy or something, and ended up on HRT and 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 so on. The questions I'd be getting wouldn't be, you know, is is there any reason you're doing okay at the old half marathon because you're on HRT? You know, you, that, that just wouldn't be the that wouldn't be the conversation, and, and quite rightly, with men it is, and the reason it is is because the the the, the, the testosterone that I take is um, identical, not in volume, I should have had, but it's identical to what The Rock is taking or what Mr. Olympia is taking or what you know half the cast of Marvel are taking. And worryingly, what a load of teenage kids are taking to look like those lunatics. But I think it's not just that, though. They take a lot of extra compounds that people don't realise. It's, it's very much pigeonholed to t steroids are you take testosterone. Testosterone is like the, the smallest ester. And then everything on top of that is what makes them fucking huge. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? So it's just the base, isn't it? It's the baseline yeah, it of, it of, of but, but your hormones um, that needs to be optimal. Th there's no question that, that, that testosterone, which is incredibly cheap. I mean, you know, this, we're not, you know, it's, you know when did the, the, the Germans figure it out? In 19, whatever, 40 odd, it's been around since. So it's, it's not new. It's very cheap. And it's, it is something of a gateway for, for youngsters. You know, if you're a, I've, I've had teenagers that have passed through that phase, never done it, but have passed through that phase of uh, interest in aesthetics and, and, and bodybuilding and stuff. And, and if they wanted to go down that road, their, their gateway in would have been testosterone and, and then, you know, God knows what. So I understand why it's a grey area. And to answer your question of why I got into it, I I got myself, I mean, for example, go back to that park run, that sub-20 park run. I did that sub-20 park run natural um, uh, uh, and and depressed. I mean, just, it's hard to describe how, um, well, I say it's hard to describe, it shouldn't be. When, you're, when your hormones are out of whack, the impact it has on you is monstrous and anybody that thinks you know that's exaggeration you know hang around a teenage boy or a woman once a month and and you'll find examples of people whose mood changes because of hormones i mean that, that's just we just take that for granted and it's it's it's, it's there's no problem with it it's just normal yet a guy gets to 40 or 50 some of them younger some of them older and has 
those issues of, of volatile or declining hormones and people say oh it, it, you're, you're making it up just so you can get jacked in the gym yeah i wasn't and i should say if they invented um a a hormone replacement for men that would give me the psychological the the, the, the mental health clarity that i have on trt but nothing else absolutely nothing else i would take it in an instant i don't I don't require any physical um, advantage. The the thing that that testosterone gives me physically it is just not used by me. You know, I'm not training in a way that takes advantage of it. If I went to the gym and lifted heavy and I ate heavy and I just trained for aesthetics and I didn't do ultra marathons, could I get big? Yeah, maybe, but but I don't do that. So I literally have this this resource in my body. That I'm just not using for that purpose at all, and also the levels at which I take it as as a replacement therapy aren't aren't really sufficient to do an awful lot with it uh, beyond what I do. So I found myself, yeah, basically very very miserable. And I say miserable, I would be in bed, unable to get out of bed, and would spend spend the day in bed eating Pringles or something, and then the next day do the same. And people think I can't exaggerate. I I can't. I mean, I was an absolute mess. Had I not started TRT, there is absolutely no question whatsoever. Uh, my wife would never have become my wife. Uh, so, so Jenna w- would have left me and would have been nuts if she hadn't. My business that was falling apart would have, would have gone. I would, I would be under that bridge that I was talking about. There was absolutely no question. I was on the edge. In fact, funny enough, uh, Jenna uh, kept a a note on her iPhone notes where she would type in every day we had an argument, her plan being that after a year, she could say to me, here's a list of all the arguments we had this year. Um, that's how nuts this relationship is. So that's why I'm leaving. That was her, you know, she didn't want to leave without sort of evidence of, <laughs> of, of how bad it was. And, um, wow. and luckily, just as we got to the point of her about to say, here's that list, I sorted myself out and, and, and all was well. But we refer back to that list occasionally. And it's, she's never put another thing in it since because nothing's ever happened. But we were having every single day, you know, it would be, she, she'd write down, um, a Mark left a, a dirty mug on the, on the side, didn't put in the dishwasher. I mentioned it to him. He didn't speak to me for three days. It's stuff like that. Um, I mean, it was just, I, I was just completely unable to, to deal with anything emotional, positive or negative. It'd be like, another note might be, um, told Mark I'd, I'd booked a hotel for us to try and, you know, get away and have a nice time. Uh, didn't talk for me for two days. Don't know why. I mean, it wasn't, it, yeah, it was insane. So I was in a horrific place and spoke to my GP GP said, yeah, you've you got depression. Here's some depression medication. And I had a gut reaction to that, which was, I, I, don't, I don't know why, but that doesn't feel right. Mm. So I didn't take it. I never, in fact, fair enough, I still have the, the tablets. I literally have them. Never, never took them that date now. But I kept them as a, as a reminder to me that I wasn't going to go down that road. And then, and it sounds daft, but, but I'm not alone. Joe Rogan um, harping on about TRT. And, and I just remember thinking, wow, I wish I felt as good as Joe Rogan seems to feel. And I thought, well, why don't I just do what Joe Rogan does? So I contacted a, I, I, I'd skipped the NHS completely. I've never discussed my hormones with the NHS because my understanding of it is that'd be a gross waste of my time. I might as well talk to my postman about it. Um, I went straight to a, a clinic and, uh, and they said, yeah, you, you know, your, your levels are, are low. You can do X, Y, Z to try and fix it over, over the next six months. And interestingly, when I'd gone to them, I'd already spent six months trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had done, I had done, everything everything yeah people go ah but you probably didn't try waking up and looking at the sunlight directly for four minutes every day (laughs) no i did everything i mean i everything and my levels were were were, were tanked so they they said have another six months tanked still and they said yeah you you, they're they're rubbish we don't really know why we can do lots of investigations to find out why but it's nothing obvious that you haven't got a pituitary gland tumor or something there's nothing that, that jumps out it could be because you were fat for years it could be because you're unlucky. It could be that there's too many plastics in you. Who knows? It, to a certain extent, who cares, really? What, what we can tell you is, you, 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 of course, you feel terrible. Uh, if you inject testosterone, which your body's not making much of, you will feel better. 
So I said, cool, yeah, I'll ask about that then, please. Um, and within within four weeks, probably, uh, actually, I I felt no different, really, because you're like kind of a, bo- a frog in boiling water. But but Jen said, oh, th- this is working then, clearly, because I've got I've not written anything down for the last four weeks about you being a, mm. being a, being a, an idiot. And then I also then started to feel better. And, uh, and yeah, I just wake up in, and, and that's been a couple of years now, two and a half years. Maybe I wake up every morning. I just feel good and positive and happy. And, uh, my physical performance has carried on improving, but it was on a upward slant anyway. I don't real, I don't see any real, uh, huge improvements there. Um, no, I just feel, I feel good all the time. In fact, interestingly, I, I, Unlike the Americans, not all Americans, but many Americans like it doesn't matter whether they're drinking, uh, you know, big gulp Pepsis or, or, or taking testosterone. They like big, um, so often they'll. Um, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm on various forums for people that, that have TRT requirements, and uh, common dosage in in the UK would would be maybe uh, I don't know, so one 150 uh, milligrams a week. I, I take about 120. Uh, a lot of Americans would, would be starting on 150, 200. And, and if their doctor prescribes them 300, because the doctor's just a bit wacky, other people would be in the comments saying, oh, you're so lucky, I wish. And which I never quite understood. It, to me, that's like going to the opticians and the optician going, oh, you need like five inch thick lenses and going, yes, I've nailed it. I can come out the opticians. I can, I can see like a flipping kestrel. It made no sense to me. Uh, I want to take as little as I can possibly get away with. And I, I lowered my dose this summer, and I got to a point where I spent about three or four days feeling miserable. And I suddenly realized, oh, I've, I've just bumped into the bottom. And I, 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 tweet, I was down to about 112, I think, tweaked it back up again. So I take, I take a very small amount, relatively speaking. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of is what it is. Uh, the, the, the problems I encounter on YouTube are, are simply that people say, um, well, of course, you can do whatever it is you're doing. Um, you're on steroids. But, but that's... That's a minority. I think people who know, know it doesn't do that, mate. And I think the biggest thing it would give you is motivation to actually get out of bed and do it. I think that's what people don't realize. Well, that's you benefit the trouble. from testosterone because of, you, you benefit from it because you're able to actually get out of bed. You feel better. You eat better because you feel better. So then your performance improves. It's not all to do with, with the, lo- I'm on TRT as well. So okay, cool. so really similar. So, but I was obviously I I found out probably about a year ago that I had low testosterone, and I'd done the same. I I I looked at it for six months, and then ended up uh, we had uh, Angela Service on here, Doctor Angela Angela Service, and she was talking about all this stuff and uh, about TRT, and then afterwards I went and got a blood test, and and my testosterone was so shit. Pause was like. <laughs> double mine and I'm 10 and years older as well yeah 10 years older like <laughs> you know what I mean and uh, I was like oh fuck like I didn't feel horrendous I wasn't depressed or anything but I, I was doing all the right things but getting fuck all results mm. yeah. and then yeah. since I've switched that little thing you, you've probably seen the difference yeah. in me do you know what I mean like my mood is a bit better but also it's just more more my motivation to do the shit I'm, I'm on a little bit less than what you're on um, because obviously I've only I've only been on like four months five months but for me, it just it just feels like it's it's just getting out of bed in the morning is a bit better, you know. Actually, going yeah. to train, you know, I, I I have the motivation to train every day now. Where at some point, so I remember I used to lay there on the jujitsu mats, and I know I'd want to train, and I'd be laid there, and I'd be like, oh fuck's sake, I'd, like, I can't be asked to train today. Yeah, but yeah. I don't have that now. I don't have that. I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's ready, like, and then I could do a weight session after. I, it's really interesting. I don't I don't know. Um how much and i'm i'm slightly fascinated just for my own interest uh, how much of my of anything about me today i don't know how much of it is 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 literally because of the chemical uh, that i'm injecting and how much of it is because of how i feel because i've injected that chemical i don't know and, and i slightly don't care um it, it interests me only because Occasionally, people do say, "Well, of course you can run, uh, you can do this, you can cycle," uh, and and I kind of get bored pointing out, "Well, I was, you know, I was doing that three years ago as well." While I was, you know, when I could, when I could get out of bed, I was doing it. Um, what, what I'm really waiting for is someone to say to me, um, "We'll give you a million pound if you come off of TRT for twelve months 
and then see if you can still do what you can do. Because I guarantee you in 12 months' time, I'll break every record that I currently have today. I'll just train like a lunatic. For a million quid, I'll be depressed. And I, w- I, will, be, <laughs> I will be in better shape in 12 months. I, mean, I, I'm, I, I eat so much junk and I, I don't train that hard. And people think that I'm in the gym all the time. I'm just not maximizing what I could be doing at mm-hmm. all. So people think, oh, it's only because of TRT. I mean, it just, it just isn't. But you say people don't understand. The trouble is, uh, where, where, from where would they gather information to understand? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, yeah, if you're, we spoke about this so much, haven't we? Like, yeah, there's nowhere, is there? No, and, and and what you do, the information you do gather, unfortunately, is is you gather information that is very particular to to the source you've gathered it from. So you gather information from sixteen year olds. You'll learn exactly what sort of cycle you need to do in order to blow up. Um, you, you gather information from someone genuine, like like we're having a discussion. You, you 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 hear about that. You talk to Americans. You're going to be told something completely different in terms of protocols to what you you're hearing from the UK. And it's not that one's right or one's wrong. It's just that, it's just that when it's so different, what are you supposed to to think? And the other thing that, that compounds it in terms of people thinking, well, it's only for it's only for aesthetics and 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 so on, is you have to spend five minutes on those sort of forums where people are genuinely in medical need. But still, the only selfie they're posting is one of them in the gym change rooms when they're pumped up. I mean, it's, there is still a huge association between, um, or relationship between, between aesthetic look, because that's what social media wants these days, and, and testosterone replacement therapy. I mean, the, the, the two are linked, annoyingly so, I mean, which is why I say, if, if they could invent a, a testosterone that only gave you the, the positivity, the mental health aspects, and, and guaranteed no physical benefit, I'd take that in a shot because it would allow me to just do all that I do on YouTube and have none of the ah, uh, but kind of conversations. Mm. Equally, there's an awful lot of people who, if you said we've invented a new form of testosterone that has none of the mental health benefits but will double the size of your biceps, there's an awful lot more people would sign up for that than my version because there are an awful lot of people on TRT just because it 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 does, yeah. You know, whether it's only because it makes you more motivated or not is is, is slightly academic. It, you do end up, if you want to be in better shape. Um, I'm always as an experiment next year. I've never trained for bodybuilding. I've just it's just not a type of training I've ever been into. But I'm thinking of doing six months of it next year, just because it's something I've never done, and it, it will almost be interesting to see what what my body does. Blow up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you'll swallow, mate. Nah, you'll yeah, be fine, mate. I, I, I think you'll be surprised. You will get bigger, but if you keep up your cardio and it depends on how you do it and whatever, be, you, you, I think you'll be surprised. I don't think, you, you, I don't think you'll be massive or anything like that. Like, no, I know like also, people associate that. They it, think it, it it's, hard to get, it's hard to get big, big because I'm, I'm too tall. So everything, my, my limbs are all too long. To, you know, the, the guy that's sort of you know, five foot six and... And, and ways, you know, 160 will look bigger than me at, at 220 and 66. Um, no, it's an interesting one. I, the, 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 as I say, the, I, I, um, I go to great lengths on the, on the videos to say that what people should be doing is they should be using my content for uh, motivation, entertainment, um, and a bit of inspiration to go and do their thing. <clears throat> and hopefully by saying that over and over and over, as I literally do, it, it, it slightly stops in their tracks people who would say well of course you can do whatever it is i was just doing and for example I, I it still happens i just ran a, a park run race against a kid a oh i've kid seen called, it right so louis louis he, he's a nine-year-old world record park did run. you watch that one? No, oh mate it, how, how fast is that kid that right, is so that, that, he's, nine, he's nine years old he runs a 17 30 5k <laughs> which is mate it, it, he was like <laughs> it, 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 his jog was more than my sprint 100% it like, was insane it was insane so we, we, me and him separate track we run around the track together and that video is supposed what it's supposed to, and it did well it's, it's, it's going to go on to do a million views that video easily it's already at half a million um, and we knew it would do well and what it's supposed to show clearly I mean just couldn't be more obvious if we tried it's supposed to show how absolutely amazing this little kid is by using somebody, me, who's capable of running a sub 25K, which not everyone could do in, in, in the first place, as a, as a real sense of perspective. If we put the average park runner against him at 28 minutes, that you can't see what he's doing because he's just so far ahead. So by having me, who people can acknowledge is a, a reasonable runner, 
it, it showcases his talent. And still, I get I get people saying, "Well, well, of course you ran a sub twenty on that track because you're on gear." It's like, well, what? what, what are you, <laughs> you're watching the wrong thing. Surely that's not what we're just. But, but then what I'll get is I'll have some seventy year old granny in Minnesota will email me and say, "Do you know what? I've been overweight for the last fifteen years. So is my dog." me and the dog are going to start jogging tomorrow or at least walking fast and we're going to try and get ourselves in shape. And, and I think, ah, okay, good. There, there are people that get my message and use it for themselves um, and there's more of them than there are, ah, but you're on gear. So, Yeah, but I think you should, you should push that message more, mate. I genuinely do because I think people like you who people – are looking up to middle-aged blokes and the amount of people that would probably benefit from going and get a blood test and going to go and check your fucking hormone levels mate i think you'd save lives genuinely i think you would save lives mate okay here's 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 the thing here's the the, the, the issue is this uh, uh, and it comes down to it's a commercial decision i I can do that video with louis okay uh wholesome family entertainment okay which i love doing uh, it's kind of the top gear of, of fitness. That's how we describe it. And that video will make me um, a few thousand pounds, okay? And it will bring people to the channel and they'll watch other videos, which makes me more thousands of pounds. So we can prosper. And the more money we make, the, the better the next video we can make will be. Or I can do what you describe. I can make a video about TRT and it, it, it quite possibly will save lives. And, and it will certainly be of massive benefit to a huge number of people but I guarantee you what will happen is I will get a subscriber drop off of people go, oh, I never knew that. I didn't, you know, and, and it, it just, yeah. it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? The, the only way to do it is to do what guys like uh, Derek does, yeah, more plates, more dates, uh, or, or Greg Doucette and, and, and lean into it and say, mm-hmm. and say, you know, I do this. <clears throat> and, 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 and Joe Rogan, you know, if you can, if you've got a big enough following, and you, you lean into it heavily, then that can become your thing. The, the, the problem I've got is I've made my thing this kind of wholesome family kind of feel, and it, it just doesn't it doesn't lend itself, I, I think. Now, I could be mm. wrong, and I might be missing a huge opportunity to simply get more views on something that's a genuinely important subject. But, but I know from, I, for example, if you leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos and you type in the word testosterone or TRT or anything like that, it gets flagged. It doesn't, doesn't appear in the, in the comments. It comes to me for review. And that's not so I can censor it because if someone's got something interesting to say, that that comment goes up. I'm all for sensible debate. But I know that occasionally and, and too often, it will be the use of that word alongside uh, you're a cheating scumbag. And I have zero tolerance for idiots in my comments so we, we just delete that so i know there's enough people out there that, that would be like that that, that it would make my life problematic to, to do that sort of content very frustrating because every conversation i have with people like this um it it, 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 it kind of motivates it fuels me to want to do that sort of that sort of conversation it's a really um, hard one isn't it for you it is a really hard one because like you said if you're if you're creating these family wholesome videos and looking at people like trying to better themselves and then you go oh yeah it's, i'm taking trt people people just haven't got the knowledge as well have they to know that you know you're doing it just for your hormone benefit and not if just i could sit them down if i could tie yeah. them to a chair and force them to watch a 20 minute video or look at some it, data it, 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 would, it, would, it would work but the, the, you know, the trouble is some, that, that's not how youtube works what happens is someone clicks on my video that, that says i'm on trt well if actually i say they click on the video first of all they see the video is called i'm on trt and a lot of them will just click dislike and unsubscribe. So some of them don't even get to hear what I'm about to say. Um, typically, 30% of people that click on a video are gone within 30 seconds. So the, the, the problem is, is not that I couldn't put together a really good um, description of what I'm doing that would leave people, if they watched it, with no questions at all. The problem is that people just wouldn't watch it. I mean, a good example is uh, beginning of this year, so right back in January, we – we launched, or we, 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 we already had it running, a Patreon service, but, but we, we, we said we're going to start putting videos on Patreon only for patrons, okay? Where we're still going to do YouTube, and obviously we have, but we're also, we're going to basically work twice as hard, and we're going to put some content over on Patreon for people that want to pay for that, that content. 
And what it will allow us to do is have no sponsors, no adverts, none of that nonsense. Uh, it means that if you're watching YouTube, you'll get a better product because you won't have me trying to flog you a virtual private network in the middle of a video. It's a, it's a, it's a win. You can't, there's no downside to it. If you just like what we're doing, stay and watch YouTube and you're going to get more of it and it's going to be better. And if you want even more and you like me so much, you're happy to give me three quid a month, you can come to Patreon and you can get that too. That is, I mean, you can't argue against that. And the backlash I got over that video was insane. I have never, in, in all my YouTube career, I've never had my subscriber numbers go down significantly. Uh, we went from getting hundreds a month to losing hundreds because people watched 10 seconds of it. They saw that I was going to Patreon. They're like, screw you, unsubscribe. And, and then they'd go in the comments and say, can't believe you're leaving YouTube. And I'd, I'd, be, I'd be in the comments saying, well, did you watch it? I, I told you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on YouTube making better content because we'll have this. And they go, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't read it. I like that. In fact, one guy, <laughs> another, one guy even joined my Patreon. He said, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really realize. I, I check out your Patreon. And he goes, yeah, I've joined your Patreon. What, what, mm. what, do, what do you do? Why do you? So I, I just know that, that YouTube is a very hard medium to put across. Yeah. Um, and I, I see it occasionally. I see, I see people do those sort of, um, yeah, they, they have a backlash against something they've done. And they do a video where they, uh, I explain all and here it is. And, and people just don't watch that. They don't watch it properly. So, so no, it frustrates me greatly. I'd love to talk about TRT. Um, it, it's, it's literally, I say changed my life, saved my life. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I, I am where I am today. That, that's the other thing I say to people. People say, oh, it's pity you're on drugs. I said, well, do you like, do you like anything I do on YouTube? Yes. Okay. Then you need me on drugs. Because there is, there is no Mark Lewis YouTube channel without me being fit and healthy. You know, I also need glasses or contacts. Can I wear those? Is that going to upset you? You know, do you mind if I use my asthma inhaler? You know, what, what yeah. else do you, what other medication do I not have to take for you to, you know, like what I do? At which point they're they going to go, okay, yeah, we, we've been daft. I do want to ask about the YouTube channel because it does interest me. You've mentioned it a couple of times, but how does like a, a, an above average former fat bloke who gives bad life advice and doesn't sell fitness products become a fitness influencer and YouTuber? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, actually, it's interesting. I don't. You guys might be a bit young. Are you, are you aware of Bill Hicks, the comedian? Loosely, loosely. Yeah. Okay, so Bill Hicks. I mean, he died a long time ago, but but hated. Um, marketing and, and advertising and basically putting a dollar sign on everything that moves with, with a passion. And, and uh, I have a clip of his stand-up in, in my latest video because, because um, I don't know what he'd have made of what goes on today. Because um, I, am, I am now in a world where everything is, you know, sponsored and, and paid. And, and you know, I have to flip through. I, none of the people I follow on Instagram have ever, well, they never seem to put a, a photograph that's just them doing something. It's always them holding the thing they're trying to flog you, it does my head in. Um, how did I get into it? Um, literally, as simple as this, 2018, uh, my kid, my youngest at the time was 11 or 12, had a YouTube channel. I knew nothing about YouTube. To me, YouTube was what you watched if your dishwasher broke and you you know, you know the error code <laughs> and, and someone else would have fixed it. So I had no idea. I didn't know anything about editing. I didn't know what I, I didn't know what iMac was. I didn't know how it was different to a PC. I knew nothing at all. Um, my kid says, I just got a thousand people watched the video I made. And I said, well, that, then, then obviously that's easy to do because there's no way on earth you've made anything useful at all. Um, cause you're a kid and you, what, what could you possibly have done? Uh, he said, no, it's not easy to get a thousand people. It's quite hard. I said, well, I'll get a thousand people. Then I'll set up a channel. I'll get a thousand people to prove to you that it's easy. And therefore there's no, there's no, uh, there's nothing to be proud of there, kiddo. Um, that's right. Write a, write a book <laughs> Shitting parenting. on his parade a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my, yeah. Pa parenting by Mark Lewis coming soon. So I set up a YouTube channel and I then went on holiday with Jen to Africa and we filmed it. We, we filmed what we were doing. Uh, I started watching Casey Neistat, who's a YouTuber, who's very into storytelling. And I, I had done some stand up comedy years ago. So, I had a kind of creative, uh, comedic urge to, to, that, that, I, that I wasn't able to sort of outlet anywhere because um, I because I didn't do stand up anymore, and and I found I could do that through YouTube. So I put these videos of us driving around, riding around Africa on on, on the internet, and they were watched by you know ten people because the channel was brand new. That was September eleventh, two thousand eighteen. 
And then in 2019, I probably made five more videos about fixing my motorbike or something. I mean, it was just nonsense stuff. Basically, I was doing the, the dishwasher videos. Like, hey, if your motorbike is squeaking, here's why it might be. And nobody watched those. And then I started doing obstacle course racing. I got into obstacle course racing almost by accident. I entered a 10K and it turned out to be an obstacle course race. I didn't realize that I got there and suddenly <laughs> I'm climbing over fences. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I thought, this is actually quite fun. I didn't even know these things existed. So I put a GoPro on my head and did another one and put that on YouTube and it got seen by twice as many people as ever watched the motorbike videos. I say twice as many. It got seen by like 30 people rather than 15. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just keep doing this. And it and it just became, yeah, it became a creative outlet. I mean, we, we, we've already mentioned about how grown men, women, grown-ups, um, never get that, that, that ability to be like, yes, they never get that kind of pumped elation. The other thing that, that you don't get as a, as a grown-up, you don't get this. You don't get proper conversation with another grown-up. Um, and, or if you do, it's with the same grown-ups that you've known since school. When you're talking about the same bullshit that you've always, it's, it's not proper conversation. Um, or, and you never also get the opportunity to take the thoughts in your head about whatever and, and outlet them. To, to, you just never get to do that. And some people might be thinking, well, I never want to do that. That's cool. But I've always had, you know, I'd find myself driving in the car, almost kind of having an interview of myself because I just want to get, whatever the thoughts were about, I want to get them out to, to, to somebody. So I found that when I'm sat talking to a camera and I'd written a script and I could say what, you know, it just let me, yeah, get my, my ideas out there. So I just did it as a hobby. And then the end of 2020, so a couple of years on, no one's watching the channel. Uh, I fell off my exercise bike, my indoor exercise bike. I fell <laughs> off of it because I got really tired. What, your indoor got, one? Well, like 5,000 people. And so I say oh, this, this is because at the time when 5,000 people <laughs> saw it, I remember waking up on Christmas day, the video had gone up about 22nd and it hit 5,000 on Christmas day. And I, to me, that was just like, but I five, you know, couldn't, couldn't even grasp what 5,000 people looks like. I thought I've made it. Uh, that's it. I'm, yeah, it's Mr. Beast. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And then, and then I thought, well, I'll do another one. I'll try and get another 5,000 people. And it, and I got stuck in a rut of very low numbers. So they were big enough for me to think I want to make another video, but, but I wasn't making any money. I mean, literally I wasn't making any money. I didn't even turn monetization on because if I did, I'd have earned a penny or something a month. And, uh, and then, yeah, this was obviously during COVID and my, my business, I was running my own company, financial services at that point. Uh, it effectively shut down during COVID. It, it was still financially making money because it's the nature of the, of the business. Um, the, I, I can assure you there are plenty of people during COVID made, made plenty of money. So th there, was, there, wasn't, there wasn't an issue with that. But I didn't want to go back to it. It just kind of remind, it just made me realize uh, I'm nearly 50. I want to do something else. And I want, and I want to be creative. I want to... Um, you know, I remember looking back at my, as I do now, I look back at my financial services career and I kind of almost feel like it was, it, it almost didn't exist. It didn't create anything. It just, it, you know, people that are rich got a bit richer because of what I did and it's not real. It's not, you know, maybe they left it there because they were all old. All my clients were old. They just, it just made their kids a bit richer. It, I don't really know that I genuinely helped or created anything. I didn't leave anything behind and I just felt like I wanted to do that. So. Um, I started doing the videos more regularly and I spent basically from sort of 2021 until last summer. So summer of 22 thinking, surely I can't do this as a job. This, this makes no sense, but I found myself doing it because COVID meant I could do nothing else. And then when COVID started winding up and, and I thought, oh, I now need to go back to work proper. We were on the sort of the cusp of, of, thinking actually if we sold the business which would basically pay us a lump of money that would allow me to spend a few more years seeing where this goes then maybe and i i quit youtube 30 or 40 times and every single <laughs> time jen said no she said you are happiest when you're doing youtube whether it's talking to camera whether it's creating whether it's editing whether it's laughing at your own stupid jokes that's when you're happiest you, you can't stop. Uh, so we, we just kept on, on going. And, and then, and I just had one of those moments where I thought, yeah, well, whatever, who cares? Maybe I live under a bridge. It doesn't work. So we just sold the business. And, um, 
And and we have now just got to the point, we're a year on now. Uh, we sold the business September of last year. We've just got to the point now where we almost, not quite, but we almost make as much money from YouTube and Patreon as we did on a very quiet month in the previous business. So we're no way near making what we were making at all. But, but we are basically at, we can just about get by level. And because we have the money behind us from selling the business, that's okay. Um, now, projections are that ultimately at some point we surpass what we were doing, but that's just projections. Who knows? Um, so really, to answer the question, just a huge gamble. But, but, but again, is it really a gamble? You know, is the gamble not staying where I was and then hoping that at 70 I didn't want to shoot myself? In fact, that's, almost, that's no gamble because I would have wanted to do that. I don't, I don't even got to 70. It was just depressing. Um, I am, I wake up every day happy and content. Um, yeah, just enjoying what I'm doing. I get emails from people constantly telling me that I've, I've made a difference. Um, and that's, I mean, I say it's more valuable than the money. Obviously I need the money because otherwise I, you know, I need the money, but getting, getting someone email you and it's, it's hard to describe. Well, you know, if someone says, I used to be in this state and now I'm not, and it's thanks to you. That's just, um, yeah. I mean, when I first started getting those, mm. I, I was, uh, that, that was, you know, you mentioned, you know, surreal talking to me that, that they're my surreal moments. When someone says to me, like, I, I'm, I've I lost 20, 30 kilos because of watching your videos. I, I'm just left thinking, wow, that's, I, I, it's a pity YouTube doesn't pay people based on, on the good they do. <laughs> um, it, it, it's slightly it's slightly annoying that the the, the the you know the way obviously obviously the way youtube works you get paid on views um and the way you get views isn't necessarily by doing quality content clearly you can do and many do but you can also just post you know drivel and, and that, that works so uh so I, I do i do clash slightly with what what i enjoy doing versus what youtube wants to pay me for because obviously social media wants to pay people for selling things, whether it's selling your viewers to sponsors or whether it's literally selling your product to viewers, they want you to sell something. And all I want to do is just make content. Um, and that, that pays, but it doesn't pay as well as uh, sponsors and, 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 you know, paid promotions and all that, you know, collaborations. That, that, that's where the money lies. I just, uh, I just, can't bring myself to um to, to 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 do it and if i if i make less money then i say if i let make less money we, we you know to give you an idea we at the beginning of this year were offered sponsorship because people are interested actually in you know, how youtubers make their money so we, we were offered sponsorship with a, a website company that we like no problem with the company they said stick an advert for us in in every video you know 45 seconds long we'll give you a couple of thousand pound a video um, you can do three, four videos a month. You, know, you can do the maths. We're talking about lots of money over the course of a year. And I, I thought initially that's amazing. That, that's, that's, that helps. And I just thought, hang on a minute. I don't, I don't want to make an advert. And, and not only do I not want to make an advert, I don't want to stick it into my core content. You know, someone said to me, make an advert. If BMW came to me, it'd be amazing. Uh, BMW and Rolex, if you're listening, if they came to me and said, be in an advert for us, absolutely. I'm there. I'll, I'll be in your advert. But what I don't want to do is take my core content that I make and insert their advert into that. The same as yeah, Harrison Ford might happily go and wear an Amiga for an Amiga advert, but he's not going to make a movie and halfway through it, stop and turn the camera and say, you oh, know, I'm wearing an Amiga and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's his core content. That's what he does. So I've just never got my head around that side of it. Um, no other art form it sounds a bit pompous, but, but this is art to, to, to you know, making videos is, is artistic has that association ship or that relationship rather with, 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 with advertising. You know, you don't, you don't watch Ed Sheeran stop during his song. And again, say I'm playing a whatever Martin guitar and here's where you can get yours. Use the code Edward. I mean, it just doesn't, just doesn't happen. I would be insane if it did. Yeah, yeah, in YouTube land, we're expected to stop, flog something, and then go back to the story we're trying to tell. And I just was left thinking, I can't tell stories like that. 
um, so I'm not going to do it. So, uh, so that's that's where we are now. We're we're basically just struggling to do things the way we want to in a world that wants to do it in a slightly different way. Yeah, no, it's good, mate. I think the the very first video I ever saw of yours, I think, when I found your channel, was it was a Garmin Phoenix review. Yeah. And I think as you were saying, then I wonder if if I got a, a feeling that you were sponsored to to be providing that review where I would yeah. stock out. Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, every Garmin I've ever owned, I've paid for with my own money. Every Apple Watch I've ever owned, I've paid for with my money. I mean, I buy those things. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, but the reason you think that is because most people are paid to talk about those things. So most people are. So it's it just becomes the assumption. And I, I remember at one point I said, I'm thinking I quite like the Apple more than the Garmin. And I just had so many people email me saying, how much have Apple paid you? So I mean, a lot. <laughs> I, wish, I wish Apple paid. I've got so much Apple gear here. Mm. I'm not kidding. I must have spent, you know, setting up YouTube was, was if you set up any business, it's expensive. But I spent thousands, many, 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 many thousands of pounds on Apple gear. I didn't get a penny off Apple. You know, if I, if I want an Apple Ultra watch to talk about it, I'm going to Apple and I'm buying it. I mean, that's how that works. Um, and, and we do that. The, the only products that we take from companies is where we are using a product already and have said good things about it already. And they say to us, hey, we love that you like what we have. We'll, we'll give you some more. So a good example of that is things like my sports gels. I go through hundreds of sports gels and the guys that I used to get them from said, we love that you use ours and occasionally you mention them in passing let us know if you need some. I said, yeah, I need them all the time. So they send me them and I, and I, I and I carry on occasionally mentioning them. Um, so we do that, but, uh, I turn down every single day. I mean, I'm literally looking at my email list here. I've got ice baths. I've got, a, I've got a, a sheet that goes on the bed that makes it cold. I've got some sort of ski goggles. Someone wants me to advertise ski goggles. I didn't mean ski. We turn down <laughs> Just thousands of pounds worth of, of rubbish uh, that people want us to sell. And, and funny enough, when I was new and the very first sponsor came to me and said, hey, we'll be a sponsor. You know, when you're a new YouTuber, that, that's like you've kind of made it. So you get very excited. And, and we kind of fell for that initially. But but then you quickly realize, oh, well, I say you do. Most most people don't. I quickly realized that I you know, my, my, my ambition was to get more viewers so more people could see what I love doing. It wasn't to get more viewers, so sponsors would give me more money. That just wasn't. And whose is? You know, if you're if you're Jimmy Carr and you're on the up as a stand up, and you think, "Wow, I had a thousand people come tonight." What you want next night is two thousand people, so so more people see you tell your jokes. You don't think two thousand people because then I can go to an advertising company and see if I can, you know, wear their suit with a big logo on it next night, and it just just doesn't work like that in any other industry. That does my head in. Um, so no, I paid for those Garmin's and, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a good example because if Garmin came to me now and said, have a free Garmin, we're now in a place where we don't, you know, we, we, we'd say no, cause we don't, we don't need that now. I mean, it's, um, it, it does, uh, you meant, you know, Joe Rogan, it does, it does tickle me sort of that people that have millions of pounds and no longer need any sort of sponsorship still go down that road. You still get. Yeah, you know, whatever. Andrew Hoopman talking about you know AG one green shakes and stuff, and it's, it's everywhere, isn't it? His 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 audio podcast, mate, are, are, are so front loaded with adverts. Yeah, it's a miracle anybody gets to his content. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love his content. I do. But yeah, Jesus, absolutely. Wow. And and he's he's making an absolute fortune off of off of ad revenue from YouTube if he had no content uh, and adverts at all. Um, so that's and again if. If it works, it works. I mean, it, it, everyone. I mean, crikey, it's not for me to tell you know, Hoofman and Rogan how to how to run their show, obviously. Um, but but I don't understand it. You know, I'm making okay money, and I'm able to say to AG One, no, that's too expensive a product. I can't. In all, I can't. I, can't. I have a green shake that I take myself. Uh, it costs a fraction of, of that. I don't. I, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how someone that's making millions. Imagine like can Mr. Go. Beast. Mr. Beast, when he's getting like 69 million views in two days. And then if you watch any of his videos, he does like probably two ads, like just talking, oh yeah, buy this thing. How much is that fucker getting paid for that? It must be it must be ridiculous. But again, to your point, does he really need it? What what are you getting for sixty nine what are you getting for sixty nine million views? Like 
that that's the trouble. The trouble with Mr. Beast is he's got to the point, he said himself, where he is now so big that it's impossible, it's impossible for a sponsor to sponsor him properly because a sponsor will say, look, our sponsorship budget for YouTube is a million pound. Uh, and he's like, well, it's going to cost you five million pounds just to get on one of my videos. They said, we, you know, can't, which is why what he's done, and, and it's almost more authentic. He's started selling his own stuff. So he's, say, he's selling his, his chocolates, whatever. Because Feastables. He, yeah. And, and effectively, he becomes his own, his own, um, he sponsors himself effectively. And that's a bit more, I mean, it's still flogging stuff, but it's a bit more, um, I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm more comfortable with that. That's what um, Sidemen and stuff like that do as well, don't they? A lot of Prime yes. with KSI and Logan Paul. They, they basically become so big when they're pushing their product out, they are their own marketing. Yeah, absolutely. But, but and Logan, yeah, Paul, Paul's a good example. Again, he, 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 no, no drinks company would have the budget big enough to have him as their sponsor. So he might as well have his own drink and, and just make the money himself. So, so and, and also I, I, I quite like the, the, the way that, um, that guys like that are just brutally, um, mercenary about it. You know, Logan Paul's not pretending his drink is, is like the next best thing in, productivity or cognitive benefits it's, it's just a brightly colored drink that idiots want to drink and and that's it and and he just wants to sell it i saw him talking to mark cuban the other day about about being the official drink for the dallas mavericks and him and mark cuban were just like yeah if there's enough money on the table and i just thought actually that's that's it it's just it's just money if there's money and, and good luck to you i almost rather that than someone saying you know here's this product and it did this and look at look at my you know juiced up arms it didn't it did that for me and i i don't like that kind of um selling that that feels to me very uh disingenuous and, and obviously youtube is uh, and instagram and everything's full of it so when someone actually just comes out and blatantly says uh you know it's it's a red tin and it's bright and it's sexy buy it I, i'm almost like yeah good good luck to you paul sell, sell as much as you can <laughs> yeah you know, you're not pretending that it's anything that it isn't um, and I've seen people debunking Prime on the on the grounds that it doesn't it doesn't provide hydration at the right. J- James Smith done that, didn't he? I think it was James yeah, Smith done right before it. he brought his own drink. Though, that, what, what was it? What's his drinks? Is Nootropics, isn't yeah. it? Nootropics. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to say anything else on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like that, is it? But I mean, it is. Uh, well, I'll say this because 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 I'm because this I'm happy to say debunking Prime over its hydration qualities is completely missing why prime exists because kids in in track suits on a sco- stolen e-scooter that are drinking it they're, they're, they're not they're not worried about sodium and, and magnesium content they're worried about just having the can i mean missing the point completely as you say it it's almost as though um there's there's an, there's an ulterior motive for yeah my boy was birth. completely obsessed with prime he was completely well i, I spent 10 pound a bottle on Prime for him because you couldn't get anywhere. I always think that that must have been a market employed by them as well, isn't it? At the start, they just didn't have enough for demand. And it yeah. was so clever because, you know, like I said, I was ordering them off eBay for a tenner a pop. I, I got to say, I, I, li- I like, I like that. Nobody, uh, people often say things like, oh, it's a rip off. It's a rip. It's not a rip off. It's a, a rip off would be as if you were tricked into buying it or, or, or convinced you had to, you didn't need to. Saying to to moron children, get your parents to give you a shitload of money, and that's what it costs. That's not being ripped off. That's just selling things to morons. And and and, and good luck to them. If, if if you can get if you can do that, then I I have no. I would rather someone, yeah, just designed a product for 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 the masses and just flogged it on the basis that the masses are a bit daft. Then, then they invented a product and said, "Ah, oh, you know, this is going to help with you know three point two percent increase in productivity, and it's going to do this, and it's going to that." Uh, especially when you you say effectively, and you know it will because because you know who I am. So, so it's my you know my credibility as a as a trainer as a as an expert is behind this. Yeah, yeah, Logan Paul's not saying, yeah, my, my, yeah, you know, I'm an expert in creating drinks. I mean, that, that's not, no one's buying it because he's like, you know, he's the maestro making a fizzy drink. It's buying it because it's his product. So when people use their own image or knowledge, uh, to, to, to sort of, you know, give credibility to a product, that's when I get a bit, 
a bit sketchy with it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I think there's I, again, if you, there are other ways to make to make plenty of money in this industry without having to go down that road. I, I think. Yeah, no, I think you're right, mate. And uh, also, must add that I think you uh, are the first guest that just, although indirectly, called Danny both a moron and dumb. I, I do appreciate the the comments. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, in fairness, I don't think he was calling me it. I think he was calling my son it. So he was saying people that buy it for their kids. Ah, oh, fucking hell! Yeah, he, you but he called. He said your. In he, fairness, he, he called your son a. Uh, I think a delinquent who, who steals e-scooters. e-scooters. I think that's yeah. what he actually yeah. said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, the, 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 you're supposed to kind of break this down after I've gone. Um, well, I, I was I was going to say, Mark, <laughs> like I was going to invite you down to Plymouth to do some ju- jiu-jitsu. You want to go and find him and do some jiu-jitsu? No, that's what I that. said. No, that's <laughs> what I said. Come down and do some jiu-jitsu, mate. I I, I keep it, fine enough. I keep being told um, that jiu-jitsu is the thing to do. Um, it, it's and, and the people that I I. I follow, you know, guys like Rogan obviously is into it. And um, uh, who else do I follow? Are we allowed to say Russell Brand? I'm not sure if we're allowed to say Russell Brand anymore. Yeah, you um, might just, might just, 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 just whisper it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know, I know he, he when, when he's not being uh, arrested, he does it. Yeah, it's, um, he's someone else I follow just kind of casually. Uh, anyway, my, my point was, um, I mentioned him only because he doesn't look like a traditional martial artist. Um and in fact, I remember the thing that the thing that kind of turned me on to the idea of doing jiu-jitsu was listening to Russell Brand talk about how he, when he first did it, uh, he had the sort of con- concerns, the wrong word, but the sort of thought process that I would have, for example, being that close to another man and the, 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 the physicality of, uh, again, when, when are two men ever, you know, uh, the, 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 the <laughs> lifestyle choices, Careful. that close together. Uh, and... And I remember reading his article on it and thinking, actually, that's, that's really interesting because all the things you're saying, oh, I was a bit worried about kind of, you know, effectively hugging another man to, 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 to the point of passing out. Uh, but, uh, but I now love it. That his article on it made me think, actually, uh, it, that they're my concerns and he now loves it. So I might, I might give it a go. So it's on, my, it's on my list of things to do. Mate, you got you got a good frame for it, mate. Those those long lean limbs, mate, could wrap around someone's neck, no yeah. problem. Well, I don't know. See, I don't know if uh, I, you tell me uh, if I've got long arms, are they not easy yeah. to snap? That's not no. My, that's my worry. It's better, mate. It's definitely an advantage. Being well, a short little dwarf like me, mate, doesn't help all the time. Yeah, you know? D- Danny's got little T Rex arms, mate. Him trying to get a choke on anybody's is yeah. that is laughable. But, but, <laughs> but equally, you can't get hold of them, it's, isn't it? Is that tricky to get? This, this is true. Yeah, this is true. But yeah, I think. Jokes it's like aside, trying to take I think, a Mr. Potato Head. There's nothing, yeah. there's nothing to get. <laughs> yeah. Even wears his little hat when he trains as well. <laughs> oh, well, now, now you've told me that I'm the right shape for it. I'm, I'm, uh, I thought everyone was built like uh, Jocko Willink and, and they're all, no, they're all like that. No, I look forward. I look forward to the future videos of you discussing uh, your jujitsu ju- experience, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm posting my uh, my watch on uh, on Instagram at four o'clock in the morning when I go off to train. I'll start doing that as well. <laughs> Brilliant, Mark. Uh, mate, thanks so much for your time. It's been a, it's been really good fun chatting to you, mate. Um, where can people find you if they want to check out your content? Uh, just go to YouTube, type in Mark Lewis, and um, yeah, there I am. Legend. Brilliant, mate. Thanks Cheers, for mate. coming on. Thank Appreciate you, mate. It. Cheers. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>